Hi Stampers, this is Kathleen with KathleenStamps.com. Today I'm going to teach you how to watercolor butterflies and use crystal effects and dazzling diamond glitter on those watercolored images to make this beautiful card. One of the things that I love about Stamping Up is the fact that all of their products color coordinate. Markers, stamp pads, paper, designer series paper, ribbon, everything just goes together so well so that you can have a cohesive image and one that just really blends beautifully. I made these card using butterflies from three different stamp sets and the stamp sets I used are the best of butterflies and I used this one and I use Backyard Basics, and I use this butterfly, and I use the Papillon Potpourri, and I used this butterfly. All of them were stamped with the Stays On Jet Black ink on watercolor paper, and then I watercolored the images after doing that. And that's what I'm gonna, one of the things that I'm gonna show you how to do today. So what we're starting with is our Marina Mist cardstock. This is five and a half by eight and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter to make a standard size card base. Then I used a piece of the Marina Mist designer series paper. This is called Polka Dot Parade designer series paper. And this is three and a half by four. Then I used Whisper White, several pieces of Whisper White. The first one is three and three quarter by five. The next was a standard quarter piece that I ran through my Big Shot top note die and I got this piece out of it. Then I have a scrap piece of the designer series paper that I, or excuse me, of the Whisper White that I will be using to stamp my birthday greetings on. And I have another piece of Whisper White that I used our two and a half inch circle punch to get this piece. Then my Marina Mist cardstock, or I used a small piece scrap, and I punched it out with our modern label punch to get this little piece right here. So let's get started and we'll show you how to watercolor and just how easy it really is. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit so that you'll be able to see. One of the things that you're going to need to do this watercoloring technique is I used two different markers. The uh, first one I used was the basic gray and the next one I used was the marina mist and then you will need your blender pen to actually do the blending of the ink. So to get started, you take our marker and our blender pen. Okay, so what I do is I just start right in the middle close to the body and bring out a little bit of ink and then pick it up right away with my blender pen, blending the color from the darker color to the lighter color. I wanted the outside edges of my butterfly to be really faint and so um, the majority of the color is at the closer to the body so that you can spread then that out and have a really light image out toward the outside edges of the wings. So we'll do that on the next wing. I know that watercoloring can be very intimidating, but I want you to know this is really very simple. The blender pen makes it very easy to do this process. It's just a case of working in a small area and blending out your color as you go. So we'll go on to the next one. You want to remember too that um, the supplies that I'm talking about today that you can go out to my website at KathleenStamps.com and click on the Order Now button and you can get all of the supplies that you would need to complete this project or any other project that you might be working on out at my website. You can also go out to look at the various videos that I've made at the different cards that I've done and any specials that Stamping Up is running right now. I have a little notations out on the website. So we'll go on to our fourth wing and again it's just that same process of applying the ink, blending it out with the blender pen out to the wing tip. And I want it very deep and dark in color close to the body 
So I'm going to add a little bit more ink closer on. And we'll do this again, just making sure that we get that deep color close to the body to help in the shading of the butterfly. And you can see this has gone together very quickly, that it's really easy to do, and I know that you could do this too. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the edges of the butterfly using my marker because I wanted the areas on the outside, very outside edge, to be a darker color. So we're just going to color these in quickly with the marker, just like this. We'll go around to the other side. Coloring everything in, getting the depth of color where you want it, making it lighter where you want it lighter. Okay, now I want to get this area right here. I don't have any color in on that area. So what I'm going to do is just drop a little bit of the ink over on the side and I can pick it up and that way I can color that area very lightly, which is what I was looking for. So you can see how, how quickly that went together. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of the full strength of the Marina Mist close to the body to get the extra depth of color that I want. And just lightly blending in the outside edges. Okay, now because I'm going to be switching to a different color, um, it's very important that I take the blender pin and I just wipe it off until there isn't any color remaining. You'll see that the tip stays dark and has a color, but nothing comes off of it anymore. So now I didn't want to do the body in black. I decided what I wanted was a gray body. So I'm going to just put my color over to the side on the watercolor paper, pick it up with the blender pin, and just lay it down on the butterfly body. I think I'd like it a little bit darker than that, so we'll do this again. Just pick up the color and put it right on the body, just like that. Okay, so there we go. And again, you just want to make sure that you wipe off the tip and your watercoloring is all completed. Now, at this point, what you would do is you would take your butterfly. Let me go ahead and zoom out again. Okay, you would take your butterfly and you would apply crystal effects all over the area of the wings. And then after the crystal effects is on, you would sprinkle it with the Dazzling Diamonds glitter and set them aside so that they can dry. Okay, and there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to assemble our card. So the first thing that we're going to do. So we're going to take our Marina Miss cardstock and we're going to take our piece of Whisper White that has been cut into the top note shape and I'm going to put this on the inside of my card using my snail adhesive. Let's pick that up and apply it just like that. Okay, now we're going to take the designer series paper and we're going to apply it to our smaller piece of Whisper White. This one is the three and three quarter by five. And we'll just apply the snail adhesive to the top edge of the card. Just like that. Now what I wanted to do is I want a piece of ribbon to run across the bottom. But I thought that the, um, I didn't find one that I liked that was a small enough piece. And so what I did is I really like this chevron ribbon. This is our Marina Miss chevron ribbon. And I took a length of the ribbon and I cut it in half. So now I have a smaller piece of the ribbon. So we'll go ahead and put our snail adhesive on this. And we'll just affix this right to the card. Just like that. Okay, and then you'll just go right around the side. 
Now, if your ribbon is shredding just a little bit, like mine is deciding to do, you can just pick up those little pieces and remove them from the ribbon. They'll come right off, and then you'll have a really nice smooth edge, just like that. Now we can go ahead and attach this to our base card. And you'll see because I have the ribbon here that what I'm going to do is run some extra of the uh, snail adhesive over the edges of the ribbon. And that will just help it to adhere better to the card base. So we'll go ahead and mount this piece on, making sure that it's centered nicely. There we go, just like that, okay? Now, I have my scrap piece of paper, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my greetings from the Teeny Tiny Wishes set and stamp the happy birthday. And at the same time, because I have this out, I'm gonna take my circle that we cut out with a two and a half inch circle punch and I'm gonna sponge around the edges of the card to just soften the edges up a little bit, add some additional color to it and just add some interest to the card. And when I sponge, I start off of the edge and come on to the edge and it's a little bit easier to control the amount of sponging and ink that gets onto your paper by doing it that way. Okay, so we'll take our circle and apply the snail adhesive and put this right in the middle, just like that. And then we'll take our word window punch and we'll punch out our happy birthday. And then we'll glue that onto the modern label. Okay, then I want to attach this to the card and I'm going to use dimensionals for this. And I just want a small piece. And so what I'm gonna do is just cut this dimensional in half so that I can just have a smaller piece of it. I like the way that you can use the dimensionals to lift up elements of your card and make them more interesting. So we'll take off the coverings from the dimensionals and that just gets mounted right here in the middle, just like that, right on top of our ribbon. Now our last step is to go ahead and take our butterflies. Now, these are butterflies that I had previously stamped and applied the crystal effects and then applied the glitter to them. And what I'm gonna do, let me come in and zoom in just a little bit again so you can see how pretty these are. And then all I did was cut them out with scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna use our dimensionals again and I'm going to um, attach them to the butterfly and I'm just going to use them on the bottom wings and I'm going to take my butterfly now and I'm just going to bend and curve the wings so that they have m some movement to them and that they look more three-dimensional. So I'll go ahead and take this off. Now why I'm putting this on, I hope that you have taken the time to go out and visit my blog um, and looked at the cards that I have made at my YouTube videos that I have and that remember too that if there are any supplies that you might need to make this card or any other card that those supplies can be purchased at KathleenStamps.com. My online store is open 24-7 and you're able to go out anytime and when the shopping bug bites and pick up the items that you will need for your card making. So we'll 
do the same thing as we did on the other and flex and bend the leaves or the wings on the butterfly and apply them to the card. And then we have our last one, which is right here. And we're going to use just, I'll just use a portion of a dimensional. I don't need one quite so large because it is a smaller piece of watercolor paper. And we'll just put that right here. I think I'll just cut this in half. Still a little large. And we'll put that right there. Okay. And just like before, it's important that you take the wings and you bend them up so that you can get some movement to the butterfly. Now the last thing that we're going to do is to put on our rhinestones. I love rhinestones and I think I put them on almost every single project that I do. I just love the glitter, I love the bling, I love the punch of the rhinestones. But I really wanted blue rhinestones because I thought that that would add to this card. So did you realize that you can change the colors of our rhinestones? Well you can. I got out a Sharpie marker that I had and I just colored the rhinestones blue and now they'll match and look really nice. So we'll just start applying the rhinestones. You just pick them up with your pokey tool. You can use the edge of your scissors. You can pick these up in a variety of ways. So then I'll just put on the rhinestones. I said we're saying before with the love the way that all of these items are color coordinated by Stampin' Up. It's one of the things that drew me to Stamping Up when I decided to become a demonstrator is I was very frustrated by never getting inks and papers and everything to match. And because this is something special that Stampin' Up does, I just love it. I think it makes a card look so much nicer having all of the edges match and having everything coordinate really well. So here's our card, all finished. I think this card is just gorgeous, and I know that anyone would be pleased to receive it as a gift. I know that you can do this card also. I know that watercoloring can be intimidating, but if you follow my steps, it can be done very, very simply, and I hope you will give it a try. Thank you for stopping by, and be sure to visit my blog at KathleenStamps.com. Thank you.